All right, so uh, this is a video just kind of going over an analogy between chromosomes and a library. All right, so I want you to imagine a bookshelf. You can imagine that you have this bookshelf in a room near your kitchen. So kind of picture that in your mind. And I want you to picture on this bookshelf, you have a library and you have two sets of books. So one set of books came from your mother and was left to you um, by your mother or was passed on uh, to you by your mother. And the other set was passed on to you from your father. And so on this bookshelf, you have both a red set and a blue set, or a, a set from your mother and a set from your father. In total, you have 46 books. 23 came from your mother and 23 came from your father. And these books aren't just novels, but they are recipe books with all sorts of different types of foods. So maybe you have recipes for soups. And then in volume two, you have all of your mom's salad recipes and your father's salad recipes. Or maybe you have your Italian food, so all your mom's Italian food recipes and your Italian um, recipes from your father are all inside of this book. Each book has about over, you know, hundreds of, of, of recipes inside of them. And you've got many books, so you've got thousands of, of recipes here. Let's just focus on one of these books. Let's think about desserts. If we look into these books, um, on page six, they both have the same kind of category. So page six, we find the recipes for cookies. Your mom has passed on to you a recipe for chocolate chip cookies. And your father has passed on a recipe for raisin oatmeal cookies. You can choose which one you would want to read. I personally like raisin oatmeal cookies, so maybe I would want to read that chain over the other one. Notice how they're the same category. They're both cookies, but they have slightly different versions that your mother has passed on to you from what your father has passed on to you. If we turn the page over and we look at page seven, um, we see cakes. So Black Forest Cake is on page seven for your mother's, and then for your father, he has passed on carrot cake. They're both similar. They both have frosting. They both are making cakes, uh, but they have different ingredients. And so they're, because they're slightly different, they are slightly different versions. And you have to choose which one to read. Let's go back to another volume. If we look at sandwiches, we could suppose that on page 11, you have recipes for burgers. And so maybe your mother has passed on to you a recipe for making a Swiss mushroom burger. And your father has uh, passed on to you a recipe for a bacon double cheeseburger, which doesn't sound to be the most healthiest, but it's fine. So you've got those two different versions. They're both burgers, but they're slightly different versions. Here's another example. If we turn the page to page 12, perhaps your mother has given you a peanut butter jelly sandwich and your father has given you a peanut butter marshmallow sandwich. Now, you might be thinking, wow, that's really gross. No one wants to read that. That's just like, that's a typo. That's messed up. Ew, gross. Nobody wants to eat marshmallow sandwich. So maybe you're going to stick with this one. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to assign a letter to each of these recipes. Because I don't want to read the peanut butter marshmallow recipe that my father gave me, I'm just going to assign a lowercase j. It's lowercase. I'm just going to assign that letter to it. Over here, I'm going to assign a more uh, a capital letter to kind of represent jelly. Okay, so j represents jelly. So I got a capital letter j there. All right. So let's say that both of my parents passed on the peanut butter marshmallow sandwich. Well, in which case, I would represent that both by lowercase j's. Okay, same kind of category. They're both peanut butter sandwiches, and they're both on page 12. And here, they're both the same exact versions. Here, they're different. Um, but they could also give me the same version, maybe the same good version. So my mother could pass on to me the peanut butter jelly sandwich, 
and my father as well, in which case I would designate them both by a capital J. All right, this analogy of thinking about this bookshelf is very similar to how your chromosomes work. So if we look inside of one of your cells and we look in the nucleus, we see that all the DNA has been packed up into tightly packed packages called chromosomes. Okay, it's diploid. Um, and so what that means is that you have two sets. Remember, di means two. So you have one set from your mother and you have one set from your father. Both combined during fertilization to create you, which is a unique combination of recipes that's never been seen before. Only instead of using the word recipe, we're going to use the word gene. So each chromosome has hundreds of genes, and they're all the same genes. So your mother's chromosome one that you have is going to be um, having the same genes as your father's chromosome one. However, they have uh, slightly different versions. Okay, let's look for instance at chromosome 15. Chromosome 15 has a gene near the top of it that codes for eye color in humans. There's one version of this gene that makes dark colored eyes and it basically codes for a protein that's going to make your eyes turn brown. There's another version of this gene which makes your eyes blue. Okay, so this would be more um, light colored. Let's say that you have been given a dark colored eye version from your mother and a blue colored eye version from your father. They're both the same gene because they're both the eye color gene, but they have um, different versions, the brown version and the blue version. This is what we call heterozygous. It basically means you have different, or hetero, you have different types. All right, we use a letter to represent these genes. So I'm gonna use a capital letter for this one and a lowercase letter for this one. Well, how do you choose which one to read? Well, in humans, cells actually choose to read the brown colored gene. And even if they have this blue one, they're going to choose to read this one. Just like if you choose to read the double bacon cheeseburger over the Swiss burger. Okay, Your cells also choose to read one over the other. Which is why I give a capital letter to the brown one. Because it wants to read that one. So here, for instance, this person has brown eyes because they have a brown eye cut gene from their mother and a blue eyed version from their father. But they read this one. It's what we call a dominant gene, okay? Maybe the mother gave a blue eye and the father gave a brown eye um, gene, but what we'd see is the person still has brown eyes. Now, if both the mother and the father passed on the brown colored gene or the dark colored gene, the person has no choice. Of course, they're gonna read the brown. Now, what if both of these are blue? In that case, you have to read the blue gene. You have no other option. So you're going to have blue colored eyes. This is what we call homozygous recessive. This word is referring to the fact that we have recessive, or they're not dominant, but they're recessive genes, and the fact that they're both the same. Okay, so here homozygous dominant means that you both have the same um, dominant traits here. Now, this isn't just in humans. This is also in dogs or in animals or plants. So you could look at pea plants. You could look at pigeons. You could look at cats. You could look at horses or sheep or whatever. They all have this same principle. Dogs have 39 chromosomes. Sorry, they have 39 pairs of chromosomes. They have 78 chromosomes. Even though they're smaller, they have more chromosomes than we do. In each of these chromosomes, you have one from the mother and one from the father. One from the mother dog and one from the father dog. If we look at chromosome 13, that has a gene that determines if a dog will have a mustache or a beard. Breeders have figured out that having a mustache or a beard is a dominant trait. 
So what does that mean? Well, it means the recessive one is not having a beard. So let's say that a, a female dog without a beard and a female and a male dog who passes on um, a no beard um, allele here or a version here, and then the puppy gets that. Okay, so the puppy has a lowercase and a lowercase here. That's homozygous recessive. He has no option but to read that gene. So the dog will not have a beard. But let's say that the mother passed on a beard making gene and the father did not. Which one does he read? This one's dominant. So the puppy is going to read that version of the gene or that allele, which is what we see here. So this dog had has a beard and that's because um, one of its alleles, either one of its alleles is that way or both of them are that way. So if a dog has no choice but to make a mustache, he's still going to make it. If he does have a choice, he's going to make one because that is the recipe that was given and it's the dominant trait. Okay, so that's just kind of an analogy as we think about um, your chromosomes and the way that genes work. You can think in terms of um, recipes in a library as a helpful analogy.